Yo guys, what's cracking? In today's video, I'm going to show you how to mount up some tires on these OMF beadlock wheels. It kind of applies to any ATV beadlock wheel. Now, if you haven't already, make sure to check out last week's video where I compare these OMF beadlock wheels to these Magnum beadlock wheels. The difference in price is about 50 bucks to 250 bucks. It's pretty interesting to see the difference. And also guys, make sure to check out my Teespring store. If you want to score a badass t-shirt like this Project 250R one, it's a high quality shirt that costs $18.99 and all of the proceeds help out the channel. Thanks guys, enjoy the video. All right, now before we get started mounting this tire, the tools we're gonna need are a torque wrench. Uh, I'm not gonna say that it's 100% necessary to have a torque wrench because I know there's guys out there that have done it without one. Um, in this case though, I mean, this is definitely a job where you don't wanna skimp out. I definitely, I feel like you kinda have to have a torque wrench. Um, you really need even pressure going all the way around the bead to have um, the proper security and to really get this thing to perform at its maximum potential and uh, in the safest way. So you have to have that, seriously. If you really need one, you can pick them up pretty cheap at Harbor Freight. Um, a cheap torque wrench is better than no torque wrench. Uh, some other stuff I have here is some regular window cleaner, wind exo work, any kind of soap or um, a bead lubricant just so that you can help get the tire over the bead and pop the, um, the tire on the bead on the other side. And I also have this little impact gun. This is not necessary by any means, but it definitely makes the job go a little bit quicker. So if you have an impact gun, especially one like this, because this has settings on it and uh, it goes all the way down to a very low setting that uh, goes to like four foot pounds, which is super low uh, and is perfect for this. So in this case, this is definitely gonna help out. So OMF does include a nice sheet of instructions and um, as most of us guys know, and I've been flamed for this a million times, we don't like reading directions. So don't worry, I got your back. I'm gonna show you how to do it. You don't even have to read the directions. Um, but they're definitely super informative and I do recommend reading them. Um, but let's get started here. And what's really nice about beadlock rims is that if you've ever mounted ATV tires before, they can be a serious bitch because they're just super tough, you know, and getting them over the bead can be a nightmare. Sometimes you have to have a tire machine or tire spoons, and even then it can still be a bitch. And especially if you have painted rims or um, powder coated rims, you run the risk of chipping them up. Um, that's not the issue and not the case when you have beadlock wheels. I'm going to show you how easily these things go on. Um, so what I'm going to do is just spray this down with some Windex. I'm going to do both sides. Make sure to pay attention where your tire logo is, if that matters to you. I like to have the whole shot logo sticking out or whatever logo it is. And you're gonna see this thing will just pop right on. And also guys, I have a towel under my rim because I don't want it to get scratched. It's a little awkward uh, doing it up on the table. It's definitely a lot easier if you're on the floor and you can put your weight on it. Um, but a regular tire or a regular wheel, that would never happen. It would never go on that easy. All right, let me wipe this Windex off. So this is what I was talking about, guys. That lip, you can't even see it now because the tire is tucked right around it. It's not gonna go out of center now because of the way that is. It's definitely a better design than those other beadlock wheels that I was showing you. It's really nice. Um, before you go locking anything down, if you want anything lined up specifically, this is the time to do it. So my valve stem, I like to have lined up with the logo. So we're gonna spin it, right there is good. And you still wanna monitor and make sure everything's centered up because this is definitely an awesome platform, but it's still possible to mount these tires slightly crooked and have a wobbly wheel. So now we're gonna line this up and something else you wanna take note of is I want my logos on the top and the bottom and it, it lines up with the logo on the tire too. Um, but you'll notice there are two spots where there is no drain lock on um, the ring and on the rim. So you could put this any other way, but then you're, you're, gonna, lo you're gonna lose your, your drain locks. So you wanna make sure that they're lined up properly. And you'll notice there's quite a gap in between here and I'm gonna address that in a second. So we'll get that lined up nice. I'm gonna place my washers down. 
I like to leave the rounded side up on all of them, make them all uniform because I'm anal. And we'll go ahead and start threading our bolts in. And you want to make sure they're spinning nice and free, nothing's cross threaded. And now's the time to take a good look. Make sure you're centered up. It's always good to double check. This looks good. So I'm gonna go ahead, take my impact driver, make sure I have it on the lowest setting. And I'm gonna drive these in in a crisscross pattern and try to bring it down nice and even. You don't wanna go in a ring or you know, in any other way other than a crisscross. Uh, if you go in a ring, you run the risk of clamping down the one side and squeezing the tire out, moving it out of center. It's gonna be more likely to stay nice and even and um, not like bend anything or warp anything if you go in a crisscross pattern. Now you will notice too, um, this plate, the ring might start to flex and that's normal. It's okay if it does that. All right, so now we're done with the impact gun. You don't really wanna go much further than that with the impact, at least in my opinion. So what we're gonna do is make two more passes with the torque wrench. Uh, the first pass, we're gonna do four to six pounds. I'm gonna do six pounds. And then the second pass, we're gonna do 10 to 12 pounds. I'm gonna do 12 pounds. And at that rate, or um, at that time, we'll be able to put air in the tire and seat the bead and we'll be done. All right, I've got all these torqued down to six foot pounds. Now's a good time to double check, make sure that we're still centered up. Now we're gonna bump it up to 12 foot pounds and do the same thing, go in a crisscross pattern. All right, now all that's left to do is seat the bead. So I'm gonna go ahead, spray a little soap around our bead. Now OMF recommends that you don't go over 25 PSI when seating the bead. The last one I had to go a little bit higher. I think I hit 27. I don't wanna go too much higher. All right guys, so this tire is mounted up. I just backed the pressure down to six PSI, which is probably where I'm gonna be, where I'm gonna be running this thing. Um, so that's how you mount them up. It's pretty easy. Yeah, it might seem like a little bit of a pain in the ass, uh, but so are women and we still like those. So these things are not maintenance free. Um, OMF suggests that after the, about the first 100 miles of use, you take out your valve stem to relieve the air pressure and do the crisscross pattern, making sure that the torque is still in spec. And then you're supposed to do it every 250 miles after that. Just keep going on, checking your spec, um, make sure that all those bolts are nice and tight. It's really not that hard to do. Um, and they also suggest that you do that with the vehicle lifted before you take out your valve stems and remove the air pressure. And we also got our front tires mounted. Um, as promised, we went with the DWT Rockout wheels. I think it's gonna look really nice with the bead lock in the back and the non bead lock in the front. I really like the design of the rock out. That's actually not like rock out. It's supposed to be like keeping the rocks out. 
Um, that's literally, um, I'm almost positive that's why they're called Rock Out. Uh, but the design is really trick, and I think it goes with the whole flat black theme. Um, it was a little bit cheaper to go this way and not get the beadlock, and I kind of like the look of the non-beadlock in the front and the beadlock in the back. We don't really need the beadlock in the front. Um, you know, the power is going to be at the rear wheels. That's where we really want that clamping power on the bead. Um, honestly, we would probably be fine without beadlocks, but it's such a trick look. And uh, I mean, how can you deny it? It's just an awesome looking wheel combo. Um, I did get these done. I took these to my buddy's shop. Um, I went to Matt's shop and we put these things on. I didn't realize how easily they were going to go on. They're two ply tires. And um, Matt actually just muscled them on without even using the machine. We really didn't have to use the machine, um, but we wound up using it anyway. But yeah, guys, so these are the tires that we're going to be running on Project 250R. This is a special treatment right here. Matt's lining the logos up. Now, before I let you go, I did get my new welder set up. So I'm going to go ahead, weld on the skid plate tabs and weld a couple other things that I wanted to do before I send the frame out for powder coat. And we'll do that now. So here's the new welder. For those of you that are interested, I bought this on Facebook Marketplace. It was 450 bucks and it came with two tanks of gas. I sold the one tank for 75 bucks. So it was like $375. Um, I did have to buy a regulator, which was pretty cheap. And I also upgraded to this Hobart. Uh, 400 amp ground, which is supposed to really help out. That's really important to have a good ground and you can see It's making pretty decent welds. So I'm happy with it. Got our C25 gas hooked up. Let's get some welding done So if you're not familiar with project 250R, I cut these skid plate tabs off I originally was not planning to run a skid plate um, But I am going to be running one now and the one that I'm using does require these tabs So I just bolted the factory skid plate back on and bolted the tabs up and I do have a little bit of a bridge to gap right there. I'll be able to take care of that, no problem. Um, I'm gonna tack it up and then I'll fill them in. That'll be no problem. And I'm also gonna run a bead down here uh, because you guys actually suggested um, to fortify these welds on these motor mounts. So I might as well just run a nice bead down there. And something else I noticed, this one bolt hole is elongated in the front A-arms. If you see this one, it's nice and round. Let me get you to focus here. And then down here, it's elongated. And I did notice um, the A-arm that came out of here had a repair right around this area. So it probably smacked into a tree or something and it yanked on the A-arm, causing that bolt hole to elongate. And that might not cause an issue uh, once we have the new A-arms bolted up, but it bothers me. So I have this washer that's got the right size hole. And what I'm gonna do is weld that in place right there. And um, that will correct that issue. It's a pretty thick washer and um, once it's powder coated and the bolts in there, nobody will ever notice it. All right, guys, there it is. Those tabs are not going anywhere. Here's that bead I ran across the bottom motor mounts. And I did weld the top and bottom of those rear tabs, which is kind of unnecessary. I do have to clean up some of the spatter. I'm gonna take care of that. And in the front here, this hole is no longer elongated. I know it looks sloppy, guys. I did hit it with the wire wheel um, just to kind of see what it looked like. And I'm gonna flatten that out with the flapper disc and um, it should look pretty decent when it's done, but I wanted it to be strong. So I kind of piled it on there, uh, but that should be solid. And then over here, you can see the same thing. I don't know why there was so much spatter. Most of that stuff will come right off. Probably just some adjustments on that welder, just trying to get that thing dialed in, but it should be a strong weld. All right guys, so with that, I'm gonna wrap this video up. These are definitely some sick wheels. If you guys are interested in getting these OMF beadlock wheels, um, I picked these up on immortalatv.com. They have pretty good deals on there. That was the best price that I could find for these. Plus, you can set them up any way that you like. Uh, make sure to stick around. We're going to have some updates on Project 250R coming soon. Uh, we do have parts coming in. 
You can see I got some parts from Precision coming in, some really badass stuff. There's like $1,000 worth of parts in here. Um, really, really top-notch stuff if you guys know what Precision is. And we also have our GPI radiator came in. Nothing too exciting there. Um, and I do have my plastics also. They're sitting in a box back there. I haven't opened them up yet, but I can't wait to see what they look like. That color should be pretty fresh. Um, we're working on a seat cover too. Make sure to give me that thumbs up, guys. I appreciate that. And I will see you guys in the next video. I uh, appreciate all you guys. And uh... What the?